Okay, so I cleaned up the front of these threads right here. I just take my the front side of my um, threading bit and cut that in at 60 degrees, same as the rest of them. Makes a nice clean. And then as you can see, I've come in here and I've cut this relief cut with my parting tool and I have a certain width of parting tool that I use for that. So now what I'm gonna do is clock this barrel. Um, I want the barrel, every barrel kind of looks like that on the inside, the bore does. So what I wanna do, I don't wanna end up where that bore is side to side. I want it either clocked up or clocked down, depending on what the customer's doing with this rifle. So what I'm gonna do is put a dial indicator on the end of the barrel. Um, I'll indicate where the bore is actually coming up. I'll mark that and then we'll figure out where my receiver needs to land, clocking it with this. So we'll be back in just a second with that. Okay, so right now I've got a dial indicator. This is a 110 thou dial indicator. I've got a 1 thou dial indicator out um, on the outboard end, the muzzle end of my gun. And I am going to check my run out so after I'm done with the threads. Make sure that I'm within a 1 tenth hour or so, which I usually am. And then I'm gonna clock the barrel so we can clock the receiver. I'll take him and actually put a mark on top of my chuck here. So let's go ahead and see what we got here. So you can see it's jumping on the... So I'm coming back to... I'm not looking necessarily at zero here, but you can see I'm jumping back to right at the same spot. I'm, I'm looking really good there. I'm, I'm really happy with that. Um, so let's go ahead and back it out and not run into my tripod while I'm doing it. And we'll go down to here. And we're less than one tenth hour run out. So we're doing great on staying where we need to be there. Now let's clock it. So that's my eye side right there. Go ahead and take a marker. And that's got to be the top of my receiver. And we'll double check that. Yep. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and um, clock the receiver. So here's my receiver. And what we're going to do is just go ahead and thread it on and just see where we end up here. Make sure everything still fits nice and good. Everything runs up to where it should. Get a nice tight fit on our shoulder looking really good. We're So right now, if you divided this axis up into four quarters, we're literally one quarter away from um, being where we need to be. So we're going to clean up the end of this and then I'm going to see where we're at because we've got just a little bit of gap here so I think we're just a hair long. We'll go ahead and check that. Take my depth gauge, and we should be 626, and we're right on that. Okay, but I do see where we got to clean that edge up, so we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, so hopefully y'all can see this. This is kind of tough to do. Go ahead and turn this on. Plenty of cutting fluid. I use my carriage as my stop, so I go always go back to the same place, lock out, lube up the reamer, and we're just taking a hundred thou passes at a time here. So we should be at uh, two and one hundred thou, pretty close to it. So I'll go ahead and I keep my hand on my floating reamer because I can feel when it engages. And I like being able to feel that. So we should be engaging pretty, there it is. And then I keep my finger on that because I can feel any chatter that I'm getting. And just real slow, taking a hundred thou pass. And the way this is feeling right now, I think I'm going to go ahead and make a 250 thou passes. We had a long ways to go here on this. I don't have a whole lot of. Yeah, no, 
I'm gonna stop at 100. Finger stays on that. And so we're two and a half, zero. 1.5. Is that reamer disengages? I like to hold it and make sure I get it all the way out. Get that back out of the way. Really nice in there. I need to get a different rag. I'm going to grab a different rag there. So one of the things that's important about this whole process is keeping your um, run out where you want it. And right now I'm less than one ten thou on my um, where my reamer is actually hit. And I'm also checking for chatter. And then I've already done it, but just for the sake of doing it, so you can watch. Stick it in there. Go in there, find the lands and grooves. And just make sure that we're going back to the same place. And again, we're, we're less than one ten thou. So looking really good. Reamer's cutting really nice. We're going to clean up the reamer. And then uh, we'll go ahead and cut another 200 thou. But uh, everything looks really good. Really happy with that. And we got quite a ways to go yet. So keep at it. Okay, so here we are. We have completed our chambering, cutting of the tenon. Um, I just kind of wanted to show you all what it looked like. So you can see um, the notch for the belt, for because it's a 300 wind mag. And this is what a 300 wind mag go gauge looks like. And I simply put a piece of scotch tape on the end to make it a no-go gauge which this particular scotch tape is just a hair over um, one thou, which is what I'm looking for. Um, so you insert that, you got your go gauge or no go gauge more importantly, piece of fuzz. And we screw on our receiver. Sorry, I bumped the camera. I cleaned all this off so it's really I don't want it to bind on me here. So we go all the way up and that, <laughs> I cleaned this off a little bit, but that was top dead center. So that's hand tight. And there's just a little bit of interference right there, which is what I'm, I mean, that is absolutely perfect on headspace. And then if I take the tape off, it closes with ease. And then after tightening down everything, um, 100 foot pounds of torque. And I like to use just a, a little bit of low lock tight on uh, my barrels. Just makes me sleep better at night, if you will. And then um, as a double check, kind of a final safety check on this, take a factory um, 300 wind mag and we slide it in and making sure that there's zero movement there, which is what we're looking for. Um, otherwise we oversize the chamber a little bit. And then also, um, that the entire case, including the belt on this particular gun, um, is inside the chamber. So we don't have anything exposed inside the chamber. So we know we got a nice, safe chamber. Um, it's sanded on the inside to 220 grit. I use a, a cleaning mop with, uh, with some abrasive that I like. Looks like that guy right there, nothing special chamfered the end right here and then I used uh, some Kratex just to polish it up real nice so that's it for the chamber in now we'll take it out of the chuck and I've got to make a um, thread protector for the end really quick before um, I turn the barrel around indicate it in 
and then we'll turn a thread protector and we'll turn the muzzle brake and that barrel will be done other than uh, Cerakote. So we're getting close. We'll be back with you. Okay, so you can hear my dogs barking in the background. What one thing I wanted to show you is we're looking for chatter and now you can see we started cutting the land right there. Um, now I see that's flattened out, but we don't have any chatter because that's not jumping and we don't have this where the reamer jumps from side to side and actually cuts into here. That's a good clean cut right there and right there. So we're getting really good, good cuts inside here. That's one way you know you have a little bit of chatter and we're getting deeper into the um, gun and we want to make sure that we don't run into any chatter. Um, it would be an inopportune if we, we would have definitely have to take care of it immediately. But I'm really liking the way everything's turning out, so I'm going to take this back out. We'll make another pass. All right, so it's been a week. We had um, two guns to get chambered up. We actually have more than that, but I got two of them chambered up. And muzzle brakes installed, thread protector. This is a Boyd's um, stock, and we are putting it with a CZ action. Metric threads, got it timed. Um, the headspace is perfect, but I also wanted to show you all what I kind of do with all of my rifles anymore. If a customer isn't asking specifically for a um, muzzle brake that will fit a suppressor, if he's not going to put a th suppressor on it, and even if he is, he gets a thread protector with my builds. But I like to take these Harrell muzzle brakes, just a really pretty muzzle brake, and I basically build it into the rifle, and it's. I, once I Cerakote this, it's so hard to see that seam. You think it's actually part of the rifle, but unscrew that. And I like running muzzle brakes on magnums. Um, anybody that asks me knows that. Um, I think one good shot with less recoil is better than um, a bunch of shots with somebody that, that thinks they can handle the recoil of a magnum. If you don't shoot a lot, you can't handle it. Um, at any rate, thread protector, same thing. Um, you can see the, I do 5H24 on pretty much all my barrels because they're most of the time they're Sendero Remington varmint tapers. So this allows for that. Nice tight fit, screw it on. Seam kind of disappears. So if you don't want to run a muzzle brake, you have the option and I cut that in at a 13 degree and make that all look nice. But yeah, so we're, we're moving on with the build. Um, last night, I got the inlet started for this particular gun. Um, a lot of channel opening up on the fore end, but uh, we can start to see what it's going to look like. And obviously this will all be Cerakoted. I still got some work to do, but um, got to get the pillars in, got to get fit up done. So that's what we'll be working on today. Stay with us.